So this video will cover the methods required to obtain suitable photographs for the geometric model metrics and how best to reduce error. There are a few important things to remember. Keep everything uniform when photographing specimens. Use the same camera and same methods for each specimen. The more variables you keep the same, the more reliable your results. This is especially true if you end up needing to take additional photographs of the fish or more fish at a later date. Um, if any fish are incredibly warped, it's best to exclude them as they'll increase the error in your final results. This is caused by something called jar effect, so you might have fish with really bent um, tails or squished bodies. But sometimes you don't actually have an option, you have to include them as you might not have enough well-preserved samples of that population. So I'll also show you how to pin them out uh, and get them to look as straight as possible. Um, you also need to find a way to stabilise the fish so it doesn't lean. Um, you can use blue tack or pebbles. I'll be showing you how to use it with blue tack, but in other non-fish based studies, um, such as uh, skulls and things like that, they, they often use pebbles more often. And it's also important to use a background such as uh, black or grey, so then we'll be able to adjust the colours later um, if there was any sort of yellow um, glow from the lighting. And these are all the equipment that we'll be using. We'll have like a foam board, pins, um, a coloured background, a scale, which will be really important when we're landmarking later, um, a camera, tripod, a spirit level to ensure that you've leveled the fish well, um, lighting, so like from the lamps so we can avoid shadows, and then the blue tack stabiliser. So why do I keep going on about error? The reason it's so important to use the same camera for every photograph is because the camera lens distorts the images and the level of distortion depends on the lens, camera and then other variables such as the zoom and distance between the specimen and the lens. The best way to minimise distortion as much as you can is avoid mixing data sets from different cameras, lenses or photographic setups. Avoid placing the specimens or the scale bars near the edges of the photographs. Maintain the same camera settings as much as you can for every image. And make sure you use a reference grid or a scale so you can correct for or quantify the distortion. Otherwise, you can have your results completely invalidated and you can't be certain of your conclusions. So, for example, all of these photographs were taken by different photographers, different cameras, lenses, levels of zoom um, and the distance from specimen to the lens. Some are angled. The scale bars are sometimes near the edge of the image. So it'd be incorrect making, uh, sorry, to make conclusions from results obtained from these photographs. However, these images, they all have the same level of zoom, same distance from camera, and they would be suitable for comparisons. So a very important step once you've set up is to do some initial tests to see which height and level of zoom produce a small sort of error and whether flash helps or hinders your efforts. So you can take photographs of the same specimen with different heights and levels of zoom and then measure parts of the fish, both physically and on the computer. So for my camera, I found the best setup was a me above the fish with a five times zoom and no flash, but it depends entirely on the camera. So you should mess about with your settings a bit to find out what works best for you. So sometimes you'll have a fish like this where the fins are all nicely pinned out and you can see where they start and begin, where you don't actually need to pin it out. But more often than not, You'll have a fish like this. You can't really see exactly where the fins start and begin. So with a fish like this, you will need to pin it out. So I'll show you how to do that. So put it in the middle. This is um, foam underneath and then a felt layer so the pins can easily go through. Zoom in there. So to start with, you want to secure the felt onto the foam because you don't want that moving around while you're pinning your fish. Then you'll want to secure the fish. And then once we've done that, we can get on with actually pinning our fins out. So for the dorsal, you want to try and find, easiest to use the, the side of the pin, the start of the dorsal, so the first spine. And then pull it out, so you're splaying all of those. 
and then it will likely uh, dip in the middle so you'll want to pull out there as well and then you'll want to do the same with the anal fin Um, quite often you can find that they actually dip behind each other so I think I can see there that the first one is actually dipping there. so make sure that you flick them out like that and there's always going to be sneaky ones and then you want to do the same with the pelvic fin finding that first spine and make sure you don't pull that out too far because it will just look unnatural. So that's basically what you need to do and now then when you try and do your geometric geometrics you'll be able to see exactly where the starts of the fins are and it'll be a lot more accurate than just trying to guess when they're flat. So now we're going to go through how to obtain the photographs required for the geometric morphometrics and how best to avoid error. If you're working in the laboratory make sure to wear a lab coat and gloves and if you've got wild lockdown hair like mine you tie it back. So the first thing is once you've got your set of your tripod make sure that the height is the same as the, the one that you found during initial tests to um, have the least amount of error. Um, if you have got your fish pinned like this one then you're all set but if you aren't pinning your fish then you'll need to pick a background so I've got black card and grey felt and then get out your fish using forceps make sure that you dab the ethanol off it because you don't want it to be shiny in the photo if it's particularly moist then make sure that you perhaps leave it for a little while for the excess ethanol to evaporate because also with the card it can get warped if it gets the ethanol on it so then you need to place the fish on you want to make sure that it's straight and not at an angle so you can use blue tech for that in your photograph you're going to need a scale which we'll use during scaling in the landmarking section. Make sure it's not too close to any of the edges of the image because it can get distorted. So now you want to set up your lighting. You do this to avoid shadows on the fish. You can show all the features. So just arrange your lamps so that you avoid all shadows. like so. Make sure to take multiple photographs of each specimen and then you can choose the best one otherwise you'll have to go back and do it all over again and then rinse and repeat. So as well as body shape, you can also utilise geometric morphometrics to look at the variation of other useful features. The lower pharyngeal jaw on the left is part of a set of jaws which sit at the back of the fish's throat and are distinct from the oral jaws. The thought to likely be modified gill arches and are often specialised within the cichlid family. Um, this specific one is from a Statoriochromus alaldi, which exhibits phenotypic plasticity in the pharyngeal apparatus. So this phenotype is adapted to eating hard food such as snails and you can see it's really molarized with large teeth and a bulky shape. The gill rakers um, on the right are on the opposite side of the gill arch, the gill filaments, so you can see that's just a dissected out gill arch, and they also vary based on the diet, so these are quite bulky and short, mirroring the composition of the LPJ. So you can also take photographs of these and assess the variability throughout and between populations using geometric mathematics.